What's going on guys? In this video, I want to talk about Palantir and the wheel strategy and specifically how I'm playing Palantir with the wheel strategy in a specific twist. So I actually have acquired a decent amount of Palantir and I'm running a very interesting similar strategy to the wheel, which is essentially the wheel but also selling puts while running the wheel strategy. Now, before I jump into today's video, I do want to let you know that I have a free 2024 research report. That is the first link in the description. If you would like to see the stocks that I'm investing in, I have spent a lot of time analyzing Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and Meta, basically the Magnificent Seven, and why I think this year is going to be another great year for the Magnificent Seven. I've outlined and done a lot of research specifically how the tech stock sector is performing versus the S&P 500. Obviously, tech stocks have a higher beta, meaning that they move more than the general stock market. And they already compromise a majority of the S&P 500. So in my opinion, it makes sense to be very heavy on technology. This is specifically what I used to work as in Wall Street. I was a technology analyst, so I've analyzed a few different stocks such as Apple, you know, their strengths and also their weaknesses because I want to be objective. So go ahead and check this out. It's the first link in the description. It is a research report. Now for Palantir, I have 500 shares, but I'm also running the wheel strategy and I'm selling puts on top of that. So this is very interesting and I want to look at the technical analysis chart of Palantir. Now Palantir has actually had a big retracement back down to the $16 level. And this stock was over $20 per share in mid to late November. But since November 20th, this stock has come down. It has actually come down below $20. It has had spikes of buying. So you can see here how the volume here is very green. So a lot of investors have been buying the stock, you know, and further on selling it. So this stock has been bouncing up and down. That's actually a good thing for option traders because when stocks bounce up and down, option traders are actually celebrating because that means there's enough volatility, enough premium. So if you get the direction even sort of right, you can make money. Specifically what I'm looking at right now and why I like Palantir so much is there seems to be a double bottom pattern and Palantir has actually gone below the Bollinger Band. So the Bollinger Band right here signifies basically where a stock should trade between. It's just trying to say the stock is going to be between this yellow lines. However, Palantir has dipped below, which is very strange. And as you can see, it has jumped back up. So what I think is going to happen with Palantir stock is it's probably going to go sideways. And that's actually a fantastic strategy for using iron condors or my special way of running the wheel strategy. So what I have personally done is I have sold some put options for 15 and a half. And I think that the stock will not go to 15 and a half specifically because the Bollinger Band right here is 1576. So I'm holding very strong the 15 and a half strike price and I have 15 contracts here. When the market opens up, I'm actually going to be doubling my position. Now I'm also running covered calls. So currently Palantir is at 1678 and I'm going to be running some covered calls. Part of the reason is also because I'm looking at options file and I've seen some recommendations around Palantir stock and I'm fairly bearish on a number of stocks, one of them being Nvidia. Now being honest with you, I have gotten burned on Nvidia. I have played call credit spreads and I'm currently down. However, because Nvidia is up so much, I really like this play right here. 595 and 600. This makes a lot of sense for me short term in the next eight days, roughly as I'm making this video. But listen to this. I actually think Nvidia is one of the most overvalued stocks in the market. I know that they're innovating, but looking at the call credit spread strategy recommended by Options Five, I would be playing some call credit spreads. And that's similar to what I was thinking with Palantir. I don't think it's going to jump up in the short term, specifically because the RSI is 41 and also because the Bollinger Band is actually tightening. I do know that they have earnings coming up, so that's going to be an interesting time and I may shift my opinion, but at the time being right now, I think doing covered calls and running the wheel strategy just makes the most sense on Palantir. And besides, even if it does go up to $17 per share, which is my current strike price, I'll be kind of happy to sell it because I have been selling a lot of put options and I've been profiting on them. But of course, I don't want to lose a stock. So what I'm going to be doing is actually instead of doubling my position on 15 and a half, I'm probably going to sell about a 16 or 16 and a half put option. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to sell put option. And I'm going to look at an expiration date that's in the near future. So let's just say 15 days because it's two weeks. You know, sometimes depending on my emotions and feelings, I will go about a month to six weeks out or two weeks out. And this is a really big debate amongst a lot of members. People always ask me, is it better to go one week out? Is it better to go one month out? And I specifically mentioned feelings because it actually is a feeling. It doesn't really matter if you go one week, four weeks, six weeks, you're actually Actually getting compensated directly in proportion for how much time is until expiration. So the truth of the matter is, it only depends on you. How much time do you have? Do you want to look at your positions every week or would you rather have less trades and look at it on a monthly basis? For me, sometimes it's two weeks, 
Sometimes it's up to six weeks. And on rare occasions, I am actually trading for three months ahead. Now, check this out, 15 days, I'm gonna go ahead and sell a 16 and a half put option. Now, I would execute this if the market was open. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to enter in 10 contracts. So the risk to reward ratio here doesn't look that favorable. However, you have to realize one thing, that I currently have 500 shares and they are close, if not going, to be sold off at the $17 level. I don't think the stock is gonna go past 17 too much, but it may go to 17, 17.25. And in that case, I will lose my shares. And that's why I'm willing to go a little bit riskier and sell some put options that have a higher delta. Like right here, if you look at the delta, it's 0.53, which is actually quite high. It means there's over a 50% chance of Palantir being executed at 16 and a half. And you can see that probably because you know, currently the stock is 16.39 and after hours it's 16.76. So that's why the delta is actually higher than 0.5, although this is an out of the money option. So in theory, the delta here should be lower. But the rough estimate is that this is going to be a 50-50 play. But the good news is when you're running the wheel strategy, it doesn't really matter because if you get assigned, you're actually lowering your average cost. So I do not mind selling calls and puts almost in really large quantities, even if it ends up being 5% of my portfolio or so. That's not a big deal. Currently, it's a 0.7 position. Now, obviously, I do have two portfolios. I have more pounds here in my other portfolio, but still, my total pounds here position right now is not that high, and I'm actually thinking about increasing my position dramatically because, again, I wanna be positioned for upside growth, and the stock has come down, but I'm finally feeling that you know now could be the time specifically because you know, the CTO has had really good things to say about Palantir. I think their overall management is triple A plus talent. I really think that they're gonna be executing on Palantir's vision and innovation. And just looking at their earnings statements, I think that they're gonna report some good earnings. So, you know, for me, I think the stock will go up, but again, I don't think that's gonna happen in the short term. I think it's gonna happen in the long term as more analysts are gonna jump on the bandwagon for being bullish on this company, as well as more investors, just understanding the power of AI and an innovation that Palantir is bringing to the market, specifically with their large contracts with the government. So yeah, in addition to Palantir, I think there's a few different AI stocks that are really interesting plays. For me, I am bearish on Nvidia, and just taking a look at two other plays from OptionsFi, I see that they're bearish on Google and Amazon. For me, I'm actually bullish on Google and Amazon, and I'm also bullish on Walmart. However, I have noticed that these are out of the money options. So that also makes sense. If I take a look at Google, for example, I wanna show you the technical analysis on Google as well as my plans for Google. I'm personally bullish on YouTube, which is where we're watching this video right now. But you can't invest in YouTube without investing in Google, which is why I think Google stock is a good stock to invest in. Now, look at this stock, it's at 144. The recommendation from OptionsFi is to do a call credit spread at 146, 147. What I think is really interesting here in a different strategy that I've not really covered on this channel, I'm gonna show you in just a moment, is that Google may go up long-term, but in the short term, it does look a little bit bearish. Now, now that may be for a few reasons, and specifically there is a little bit of a double top pattern here forming. But what I think can happen, let me just show you in the trade Google options, is you can have an interesting view by profiting in the short term by selling a call credit spread, but going long term with a leap option. Okay, so this is gonna be a combination. This is gonna be a really interesting strategy right here. So I'm gonna go to February 16, and I'm going to go to sell call option. Now, me personally, I would go a little bit higher than the 146, 147. So I'm going to go up to 150, just a nice round number, okay? A lot of investors have really high volume on these nice round numbers. So for example, the 150 has 908 volume, but if I go to like more of a weird maybe number like 175, well, the volume is still really high. But if there were, let's actually change from February 16, let me show you a uh, different expiration date because February 16 is the traditional expiration. There's gonna be a lot of volume. If I go to something like February 9, you can see here how there's a lot more strike prices. So if I go to 147, you can see how the volume is just 12. I mean, not that many people are actually trading it versus uh, 150, the volume is 484. So you can see how many investors do like nice round numbers. So I'm gonna go ahead and sell the 150 and then I'm going to buy the 152 and a half. So you can see right here that this is a call credit spread. But now what I also wanna do is you can create a different position by buying a call option, except again, my short-term view is Google may not go up that much, but my long-term view is that I am bullish on Google 
long term. So let's go to something like May 17, for example. You can see here, I can actually buy a pretty aggressive option, let's say 145. Now the delta here is 0.53. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy this. And now you can see that the chart is basically looking like this. It is a very bullish position. However, you receive a lot of growth fairly quickly, and then you have a slight stall. This is specifically interesting because you're only putting up about $220, which is you know not bad at all. Here you can see you start benefiting really quickly on any upside, and then you have a little bit of a slowdown. So if Google just goes up a bit, you'll realize a really quick profit. You have a little bit of a slowdown, and if Google really takes off by this May expiration, then you will get a really big reward. And by the way, this right here, the 220 loss, I just thought about it, is not correct. The reason why it's not correct is because we're actually spending 935 dollars and we're only collecting a small amount on the call credit spread so actually our total cost is going to be 906 just seems like there is a glitch on Robinhood and another thing you could do is you can actually change the contract ratios from normal to custom and for custom for example you can create a larger call credit spread position so let's just go to five on this call and then we're going to do another five on this call and now you will notice that we have a really interesting payoff chart so basically if uh, Google goes up a little bit in the short term, you can start realizing a pretty hefty, you know, more than double on your money. Well, actually this is 790, so almost a double on your money, 644 versus what you're putting up. And then if it ends up in this weird area, yes, you'll experience a loss. However, this long-term call option on May uh, 17 expiration just goes up so much that it will compensate for a lot of Google's upside. So right here, you're kind of playing with calculus in a way, but the biggest benefit of this strategy is you get a big upside. And then if it ends up in this weird area, yes, you can experience a loss, but then you still have unlimited upside potential here as Google goes up. So I just wanted to teach you guys a little bit more about options in this video, my view on Palantir here. And again, if you want to get my research report on Apple, on Microsoft, all of the pros, the cons, and why I think they're good investments, as well as why I think NVIDIA is not a good investment, then check out the first link in the description. Catch you guys in the next one.